At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend Brain Fog and Memory Loss on Wednesday, February 14th at 6 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live on 105.9 FM WMAL. Hi, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here, and we've got a great program for you today. We're going to kind of continue to lift the veil a little bit on the dementia pattern. You know, your forgetfulness, the brain fog, the I don't know what I'm doing type of thing. And, you know, is this a sign of old age or is this something that is happening because of a lot of other reasons? Over the last couple of weeks, we've kind of picked it apart a little bit, but I want to do more of that today. And, you know, before we get started, I want to remind you that immediately after the program, as soon as we're done, we go into a live stream. We had a couple of technical uh, glitches on it, but nevertheless, uh, all you have to do to find it is two things. Go to drtomrosell.com and there should be a screen up there that says click here and it'll take you directly into the live stream. And there'll be a few, you know, commercials and things that we put up there about what we're doing and so forth. But it goes very quickly and you go right into it. Then uh, there's going to be interview. This week's interview is going to be really, really exciting. Uh, we're going to be talking to Dr. Peter Leando. Uh, he is a medical physician and the head of EMI or electronic medical imaging. And there's a master in thermographic patterns. Uh, Peter is from uh, the UK initially. Now he lives in Greece. He's all over the place, works for uh, multi-international uh, healthcare organizations. You're really going to enjoy this. Uh, Peter's a great guy. So make sure you do that. So here's the other way. Remember, I said there's two ways. If you go on Facebook or if you go on YouTube or if you go on Instagram and LinkedIn and all those different platforms and follow me, just click, you know, follow. And what will happen is when we go live stream, you will be immediately noticed that we are live and ready to rock and roll. So do that. And you, so you have two options, drtomrosell.com and go to live stream. So one of those two things, and then the other piece is what? Then you just go to your favorite social media platform and follow me because I'm on all of them and you can find it that way and we'll make it happen. So let's get into the program. Let's talk about what's really going on. We're talking about your brain and sometimes it's, you know, as a, a very uh, interesting man, somebody that I like to listen to, uh, Chris Plant on WMAL will say, you know, when he refers to people who don't function, quote, the brain, she's a no good. It doesn't work as way it should, right? Well, here's the deal. You can make it better, but you got to know what to do about it. You have to find out what's the problem. And on February 14th at the Roselle Center for Healing in Fairfax, we're going to be doing that. And you're invited to join us. And I promise you, I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to give you some tools. I'm going to let you go home with you know some things that you can make life a whole lot better. But remember, this problem with dementia is multifaceted, has huge numbers of tentacles. And sometimes it can be done uh, very straightforward relative identification. And sometimes you got to kind of work through the maze a little bit to find out what's happening. So what am I talking about? Well, we know that memory patterns can come about from any trauma pattern to the head, to the brain, and also to the body. It can come around because of your exposures to toxic metals, environmental pollutions, things that create an inflammatory bundle. And it also can come about because of huge amounts of stress. In the modern vernacular, we can call that PTSD, right? Well, 
PTSD is also multidimensional because it's not just the exposure set, oh my God, things. It can be as a result of repetitive injury patterns, all the things we're talking about. So we want to put clarity on that for you. But more importantly, we want to give you tools that you can use to make a fundamental difference with all of this, you know, I don't know what I'm doing type of attitude. So let's get into it just a little bit. I want to, on the 14th of February, when you come into the office, we're going to talk a little bit about a test called brain span. And it's a really quick test. We've used it in the in practice at the Results Center for Healing in Fairfax for a lot of years. Uh, brain span uh, is a online computer test as well as a, a finger prick blood test. And it gives us very personalized and validated and very actionable steps in conjunction to doing uh, you know other things that you may need to have done. But the each each of the test kits that we use uh, will give us some nutrients such as vitamin D, which we all talk about, right? Specific fatty acids, their omega threes, and more importantly, the omega six and three ratios. Your omega threes decrease inflammatory reaction. Your omega six and the right balance are not a problem, but if they get way too high, they can cause metabolic degenerative problems. So these guys have impacts on inflammation and also the metabolic health, if you will, of the nerves of your brain and how they connect to other places. Wouldn't that be great? Well, join us on the 14th and we're gonna talk a lot about that and you know what they really, what they do and how it helps us help you and a long-term situation because that's really the important piece. But we're gonna we'll, we'll talk about uh, inflammatory responses and does the brain get toxic? We know that it gets toxic. Uh, years ago, the brain was thought not to have a waste elimination process like a lymphatic system. Well, in the brain, we know now that, uh, and through research that it does have one, it's called the glymphatic system. And that's just a limb system that clears the brain. And, you know, the testing will do short term and sustained attention, uh, processing and how quickly you process. Is it slowing down or is it normal? What's your stress level? But how would you like to find about your, you know, how to optimize your performance and improve your focus and attention? And, you know, a lot of this has to do also to, uh, you know, what happens, you get a little too fat around the middle and you do everything that you can to get it done off, if you will. Well, we're going to talk about improved lean body mass when it comes to these type of conditions. Uh, how about pain and inflammation? And ladies, sometimes, you know, pregnancy and, and uh, breastfeeding are a result of certain depletions, and we have to know what they are across the board. So this is uh, it's going to be a really fun process. Uh, we're going to show you, talk about that. It will be one of the things that we're going to talk about. Let's get into the progressive signs of dementia. You know, like you don't know where you are anymore. Well, it's not quite that bad. But there's early stages and there are things, and they're not all due to Alzheimer's, by the way. And I don't want you to think it is because you can end up with demented problems um, and it's not that. So the early stages of dementia, is you're going to see a progressive continuum. It could be very mild in the beginning, you know, memory problems, uh, you're you're not processing the way you used to. You can't remember certain words anymore. You, you see somebody on television and you recognize them, but you can't put their name to it anyway. But if you're like me years ago, you know, when I was in college, I used to bartend and I knew the person's drink. I knew who they were. I could tell you all about what they did in their lives and so forth. But good Lord, it would be very difficult in some situations for me to come up with the memory. We're not taught or the name. We're not talking about that type of memory pattern. We're talking about that your memory was really good with names and, and identification things. And all of a sudden, it's slipping just a little bit. And we're talking about visual perception problems as well. And what does that mean? That means you look at something and you really can't not only put things in its proper position, but it's uh, you become agitated because it's taken a while to identify. It changes in your mood, your emotions. Again, these can go from very, very subtle, subtle changes to quite significant processing problems along the way. So we're going to get into that. But more importantly, we're going to tell you what you can do to help yourself if you're willing to be one 
you know, your own advocate that you're going to hold yourself responsible and, and make it happen. But you, the, it's just because you're losing a little bit, it could be for a lot of things. Is it getting older? Uh, what's the prognosis? Do you, are you like on a slippery slope and it's going to go all the way through? The general answer in the greatest majority of cases is that there's a reversal if you know what to do and how to get there. You know, think about where you are right now in your life and think about what you used to do. And I don't mean, you know, that you were a football player when you're in college and you can't do it anymore. Of course you can't. I mean, that's an elite performance situation. But are you getting exercise that you used to get? Are you getting outside? Are you stuck in the house? Is the only exercise that you get grabbing the remote and flicking the switch? You know, do you challenge yourself? Are you learning new things? Do you try to re-stimulate? I sit when I have a few free moments and my brain kind of just wants to escape, I'll sit and I'll do word games and then I'll do math games and I'll do puzzle games because I know that as we go through the process of getting older, if you don't challenge yourself and I try to learn, I'm writing and I'm lecturing and I'm involved and engaged. And if you don't do that in some way, if you don't join an organization where you can contribute your talents, I promise you, it's going to get kind of ugly going down the pathway. But guess what? What happens if you've been putting up with injury patterns for a long time? And you, that injury is causing something called inflammation. You know, we've talked about it forever. Um, if, if that's the case, then that has to be fixed. That pain's got to go away. That, that uh, uh, communication between one system and another. You got to find out, is it the processing that you're having a problem with, or is it the chemical absence, things that you need to make it take place uh, that's no longer there? Well, we're going to show you what to do with that as well. But stress of any kind, and I, stress is you know one of those things we talk about, but sometimes we don't fully understand what, what it's all about. Stress can affect memory. And the reason that it does that is because it has the ability to cause the communication pieces in the brain, we'll call those synapses, and particularly in an area called the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Where's the prefrontal cortex? Put your hand on your, your forehead. It's right there behind it. And uh, it causes degeneration of those areas over time, breakdown. Now, until it gets fully destroyed, you can reverse it because here's an interesting thing about the brain. Every cell of the brain has a holographic memory of every other cell in the brain. So it's like its own backup system. And if you destroy, you know, a part of it, you can usually recoup it someplace else with a lot of attention and specific focus on what to do about it. But there's a place where if you uh, destroy too much of it, eh, you're kind of, you know, in a real bad place. But no matter how bad, things can be made better. But those Two areas, particularly the communication between the hippocampus and which is kind of towards the middle back and the prefrontal cortex, you know, gradually will degenerate and break down over time with constant, unrelenting stress. So let's, uh, you know, let's break down this, you know, what I just talked about a little bit. Synapses are, as I said before, the communication pieces in the brain, the connections, you know, the one cell talking to another, one. Um, little piece of the puzzle going to someplace else. And it allows processing and allows us to recall and it also allows us to store information. So you have to understand that there's a whole system. It's not just one part of the brain, and but there's a lot of real return uh, potentials. So what are, what are the biochemical causes of, of uh, what we're talking about? How about just straight up alcohol? Alcohol and drugs, okay, social drugs. How many of you go home at nighttime or have in the past over the years? And the first thing you do is you go get a bottle of something because you got to have a drink to calm down. Or you walk into the house and you want to get a joint, right? You have to have that, that marijuana, as they say, back in the day. Well, what happens is that it can contribute to memory loss, and particularly in guys. And, you know, the recommended limit for most of us, if we have anything, you know, that uh, that's an alcoholic spirit is no more than about an ounce 
uh, a day and then get away from it or five ounces of uh, table wine, uh, maybe a beer. But in addition to that, I want to tell you that you have to make sure that you go out and you exercise. The brain is regenerative. It will return. Years ago, we didn't, we didn't think it was. When you lost the, the, uh, the cells of the brain, that was it. You were done. But now we know that it can return and function can be restored. So if that's the case, first thing we have to do is quit destroying it. And so we don't have to continue to repair it. But how about medications that you're on? Tranquilizers and antidepressants and things of that nature. Uh, these things can cause sedation of the brain and can cause confusion and inability to play, pay attention to new things. That's where you, you can't learn anything. And unfortunately, in our environment, medications are abundant, even if you're not taking them. What do I mean by that? Ladies, if you're on hormonal therapies, guys, if you're on hormonal therapies, your body is only going to use so much of it. And the rest of it is you're going to excrete in the urinary process, and you're going to dump it into the refuse, your toilet, and it goes into you know, these, the sewage system. And we think, well, it's all done, it's gone. Well, not necessarily, particularly if you live in a water reclamation area. What does that mean? That means that they take your sewage water and they reprocess it after they take all the sediments, all the junk out of it and so forth. And they, as long as it meets a certain standard, they combine that with other fresh water for your drinking water. Yeah, that's what I said. You're, you're, you're drinking your own junk. And unfortunately, in the processing, one of the things that they can't get out completely are these hormones and the medications that we take. They're unable to completely eliminate that. So what happens? That goes back into your body. One of the reasons that we're seeing guys today, and I'm diverting just a little bit with real problems with erectile dysfunction is because they're getting too many estrogenics in the water and some of these other medications and so forth that suppress hormonal interaction within the system. So think about that for a while. If that's the case, you have to be saying, oh my God, oh my God, and why the increase in risk in cancers? Well, we can trigger a lot of those underlying stuff and now we've had all these COVID vaccines and boosters and so forth. And we know the literature shows that it accentuates it. But here's the other piece, these we're seeing and if you look it up and you go to places like the Townsend Letter and you go to PubMed and you go to any of the medical journals, you're going to see suggestions at this point that we're seeing increased levels of dementia, if you will, and confusion and inability to process and learn and so forth. Could that be, you know, as a result of what we went through? I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you just based on the data. Remember, I said, be your own advocate. So. The other piece, believe it or not, is this little guy in your middle of your throat is called the thyroid gland. And faltering thyroid hormones could affect memory. And it also causes, you know, sleep and uh, sleep disturbances and depression and the like. So that causes the memory to slip a little bit. So when we're talking about stress and anxiety, we're talking about depression, we're talking about sleep deprivation, we're talking about you know, all these things cumulatively over a period of time, could they be causing a problem? And the short answer is absolutely yes. They, they could be causing a problem and they add to other things that we may be putting up with. How many of you take, you know, Advil on an ongoing basis or you take Tylenol on an ongoing basis? Now we're building up a toxic reaction in the body. Those guys affect your liver. So why are you taking the Advil? Why are you taking the Tylenol? Why are you taking the Motrins and any of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory? Forget about the prescription drugs. Well, the reason you're doing this, you're probably trying to put the fire out on some sort of pain. So your doctor you know, says, well, here, take this. It'll help you deal with it. It's not a problem. You know, There's not much we can do about it until you know, surgery is required. But wouldn't it be great to be able to fix it, to get rid of the pain, we're going to talk about that as well and how that pain pattern, that persistent stress of not of hurting all the time causes the mind not to work the way it's supposed to work. Now, your right side of your brain is your emotional side of your brain. Your left side of your brain is your cognitive, detailed, you know, 
that's the guy you go to war with. So both of those guys have to work in balance. And there's ways of determining the right side, the left side, which one's not working. I'm going to show you that on the 14th. Dr. Qinglong Zhang and I will be uh, co-presenting, but I'm going to make sure that I give you a whole bunch of take-home stuff that you can do to help yourself. I promise you that in addition to the brain span test, you're going to uh, have some tools to at least one, understand what's going on, but secondarily to be able to put it together in a way that you can begin to reverse the process. Remember, we're going to talk about that brain span. Now, we've been touching upon it, but let's talk about forgetfulness due to trauma. Often the diagnosis becomes what? PTSD, an expressive disassociated memory or amnesia. But it's more than that. Why would we disassociate our memory? Well, it could be a, such an emotional trauma that you know, we just can't face it. We can't deal with it. We don't have the tools to do, deal with it and so forth. So that disassociated memory is diagnosed when there is no evidence of traumatic brain injury or loss of cognitive function. The problem is this, is that many PTSD patterns can be combined with a stress pattern, a disassociated memory, or repetitive pain that the body is trying to block. That's a disassociative condition as well. It's trying to forget that it's hurting. It's forgetting that they lost a limb. It's forgetting that there was a, a trauma that took place, that a, a, an abuse situation years ago that was combined not only with the emotional trauma, but also with pain that may have been associated with it and it continues over a period of time and we don't know why it's there. So we forget and we do it on purpose, but then what happens is it blocks other pathways that need to be stimulated and we begin to say, oh my gosh, we have a problem here. So disassociated memory due to trauma can be multidimensional. So there was an interesting paper that was written out of California, uh, of all places in the world, right? And this goes back a lot of years ago, and it was on how trauma affects your memory. You can look it up. It said Casa Palmera uh, was the publisher. So check that, see what you think. And I, uh, I think that you're going to find it interesting. This is trauma and memory loss, how trauma affects the brain, uh, physical trauma, and memory loss. And you can go through and, and put it together. But on the 14th of February, we're going to really get into this in detail. I'm going to show you what, what you can do to help yourself. And I'll show you how to, to really identify it. But more importantly, is it pain? Is it emotion? Is it stress? Is it a combination of those things? Is it chemical? We're going to take you through the weeds and we're going to identify that. We're going to talk about that brain span test and how we really can identify things that we need to reverse. It's important that you have the tools. It's important that you understand that something can be done. It's important that you realize that it's not something that you have to die with. And under the right circumstances, with the, with the right directives and so forth, you can make a huge difference in how your body responds. When we come up uh, at the end of the program, we're going to go into our live stream. Uh, my guest, Dr. Peter Leando, it's going to be a really exciting time. I can't wait to talk to Peter. He's extraordinary. He's outstanding. This guy's got a bandwidth that is amazing. Uh, obviously, you all know that we do thermographic imaging at the Results Center, but it helps us. And by the way, it can help identify some of the problems that you have with dementia. We're going to kind of walk through that on another program. But uh, nevertheless, uh, listen to this. Remember, you can go right into drtomrosell.com and or, you know, any of your favorite social media sites. Make sure you follow me. If you follow me on those sites, then we will let you know immediately. Boom, I go right to your cell phone and we can get it done. We're coming up to that part of the program where I'm going to have to say I'll be right back. And that means on live stream. And we're having fun doing this. And there's so many of you following us. Remember, I continue doing this only for one reason only. One, you deserve it. But more importantly, I love you all. I'll see you next week. Bye.
Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Neuromuscular dentistry is more than just teeth and gums. Temporomandibular joint disorder is a very painful disorder, which only a skilled neuromuscular dentist can diagnose and treat. If you're in pain and suffering from TMJ, call the neuromuscular dentistry experts at Soft Touch Dental Care. Learn more about TMJ and how Dr. Michael Chung DDS has successfully treated patients. Visit softtouchdentalcare.com or call 703-319-6990. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend Brain Fog and Memory Loss on Wednesday, February 14th at 6 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. 